Um, we welcome the members of the public who are in person and who may be watching our usual video feeds online. This is um, the meeting for the Redevelopment Agency of Salt Lake City for those that are watching. Hybrid board meetings allow people to join online through WebEx or in person at the city and county building. We're continuing to watch COVID rates to make the safest choice for all of us. In fact, although masks are no longer required in the building, since COVID cases are rising, we encourage people to wear masks while here in our meeting. There are some in the hallway if anyone needs one. We will continue to monitor the situation and take responsible precautions for the public and staff. I hope I didn't miss anything. So we're going to move on to our first agenda item, and it's item A, comments. We start our RDA meetings with comments to the board. Your feedback is always welcome, and you can share that with the board anytime by mailing the council office at P.O. Box 145476, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84114, or emailing us at council.comments at slcgov.com or by calling our 24-hour phone comment line at 801-535-7654. We're accepting your comments in person and through WebEx. And for those whose only option is to call in, staff will be monitoring a separate telephone line. I want to mention the rules of the quorum. These are guidelines to help our meeting progress in an or orderly, civil, efficient way. We want to give everyone the opportunity to voice their opinions without feeling intimidated. In order to achieve this, our rules of the quorum begin from the moment you arrive in person or into our virtual meeting. The RDA board respects all points of view and we welcome new insights. Please be respectful. Avoid yelling, profanity, or making racial slurs, obscene or defamatory remarks. If you violate this rule, your line will be muted or you will be asked to stop. If you feel you need to use profanity or disrespectful remarks to express your point, you're welcome to email board members or call our comment line. In addition, our staff will request your name during the WebEx registration process. To limit disruption, your name cannot include a message or violate our rules of the quorum. If your name doesn't meet this requirement, then our staff will make contact with you to gather that information. For those joining in WebEx, please monitor your chat in case we try to reach you. Scott Corpani from our staff is helping to moderate that meeting sorry, moderate the meeting and we'll be messaging with attendees to coordinate on any questions with your commenting registration. Staff is handling a number of tasks, so please limit messages to technical issues and minimal changes to your registration. Taylor Hill on our staff we will, will be calling the names of those who wish to comment. We will call names of people joining on WebEx and in person based on the order of registration or received comment cards. When it is your turn to speak, Taylor will announce your name. For people in WebEx, she will unmute your line and you may begin. For people in person, please step up to the podium and if you have a mask, please, please feel free to remove it before making a comment. Once you begin, please state your name and the two minute timer will start. We will now open our general comment period. Taylor, please start with our first comment. Thank you, Board Chair. It looks like there is not anyone here to speak for general comment. All right. Well, anybody else in the public here? I don't see anybody. So we have uh, no public hearings today, so we're moving on to item C1. And we will receive a briefing about the RDA Commercial Assistance Opportunities Program. And at the table, we have Lauren Parisi, Ashley Ogden and Kara Lindsley. Oh. Oh my gosh, C1. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, excuse me, we're going to go back to C1. I just read C2, so I'm ahead of uh, the agenda. So uh, item C1 is actually the approval of minutes. And we, the board will approve the, minute, the meeting minutes of April 12, 2022, May 10, 2022, and May 17, 2022. Madam Chair, yep. um, I, I move that we approve the minutes from April 12, 2022, May 10, 2022, May 17, 2022. Second. 
right? I have a motion by board member Pui and a second uh, by board member Dugan. I'm going to roll call this. Fowler? Yes. Wharton? Yes. Pui? Yes. Mano? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Petro? Yes. And I'm a yes. So that passes. And now we are at item C2, which is the RDA commercial assistance opportunities um, new program, and we will receive a briefing. So thank you, ladies. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. It's good to see everyone. Uh, my name is Ashley Ogden. I'm a project manager. I don't present to the board very often, but I'm here with Lauren Parisi, um, who you see about every month. So would you uh, would you bring your um, microphone a little bit closer? Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we're here to share some preliminary ideas for a set of RDA commercial assistance programs. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, there's no slides. Sorry. Can we have the slide deck? <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, so just to set your expectations and give you some context, we thought we'd start and end this presentation with our next steps. Uh, we've been teasing this program for a while, um, but this is the first time we've brought our ideas to you and we're still in a very early stage. Uh, we first wanted to take the opportunity to gather feedback from our advisory committee and the board before launching some community engagement efforts that will last the summer. Uh, we plan to engage the local business and nonprofit communities who are trying to serve through these programs and also get other perspectives from commercial lenders, uh, brokers, and developers. Today we'll highlight some national level data trends, but we do have plans to gather local level demographic and small business data to get a better sense of what's happening in Salt Lake City. Uh, some of the ideas we have are new for the RDA and maybe the city as a whole, but many concepts are already being implemented in other cities who have similar commercial objectives. So we'll continue that case study research into how other programs in, are structured and how they're performing. And last, we're hoping to be able to come back to you in the fall, um, early fall, to present our findings and get some additional feedback before drafting a final uh, program proposal. And if we could stay on this slide for a second. Um, one of our RAC members asked a great question at our meeting a few weeks ago, which was what led us to, um, to wanting to create some more targeted commercial programs. And I think it was last September when we presented what we call the RDA's Equitable and Inclusive Development Work Plan, which is a living guidance document that will evolve over time and include some goals and actionable steps for staff to take to uh, make sure we're infusing those equitable and inclusive uh, development principles into all facets of our work. So I wanted to share an excerpt from that plan's purpose statement for board members who may not have been here last fall. Uh, next slide, please. I'm sorry, I do read to you a few times today. Um, the agency acknowledges the negative impacts that traditional economic development and redevelopment strategies have historically had on targeted communities with concentrated poverty, lower levels of housing stability, and higher shares of minority populations. Uh, as part of its mission to revitalize neighborhoods and business districts in a way that fosters livability and neighborhood vibrancy, the agency is in a unique position to ensure the inclusion of equitable development strategies that encourage everyone to participate in and benefit from new investments being made in their neighborhoods. So I think that summarizes uh, the ethos behind some of these changes and frankly, uh, the ever evolving role of the RDA as market realities change. Uh, later in the presentation, you'll also notice we took some of the goals directly from that equity work plan and used them as objectives for our new commercial programs. Next slide, please. So these next few slides describe challenges faced by local retailers and negative impacts that result from their closure or displacement. And again, I want to acknowledge these are national level trends and they're not at all comprehensive. Um, but national studies have shown that commercial rents in urban areas are becoming increasingly expensive. And in addition, the pandemic resulted in severe impacts on local businesses, especially those owned by people of color. Next slide, please. Um, so to dig into each of those issues a little bit more, um, again, commercial rents are rising so quickly on a nationwide basis. Some ref reports refer to it as crisis level, which is not unlike language used to de describe our affordable housing crisis. Um, researchers say that causes lie in both high demand and diminishing supply. So on the demand side, 
there's a lot of capital flowing around urban areas and investors' priority is to maximize returns, which is leading to a lot of speculative development and price increases. Uh, walkable urban environments are also increasing in popularity, which is good for business, but it's also increasing demand for retail spaces and leading to increasing rents that outpace sales growth. Um, and this increased demand includes demand from national chains. So basically these companies um, have already saturated the suburbs but still have gross targets to hit each year. So they're turning towards more urban areas to expand their market footprint. And on the supply side, um, as cities gain popularity and experience gentrification, a lot of redevelopment occurs. Um, this will often include the redevelopment of buildings with smaller historic retail spaces, which may not be replaced at all or may be replaced with larger, more expensive space. And last, another reason for the proliferation of chains is due to lending practices. So banks will often provide more favorable terms for developers who have signed national brand name tenants because they're seen as more predictable and less of a risk. Next slide, please. So that second challenge, um, COVID-19 had severe impacts on local businesses in general, but there was a disproportionate impact on those owned by people of color. So since February of 2020, a quarter to one third of all U.S. small businesses have closed. And on top of that, businesses owned by people of color and immigrants tend to be concentrated within the food, personal services, and retail sectors, which are most vulnerable to economic downturn. Um, a survey taken during the early months of the pandemic found that um, the number of black business owners had fallen by 41 percent. Latinx business owners uh, fell by 32 percent. Asian business owners had fallen by 26% compared to white business owners, um, which had fallen by 17%. And a separate survey later that year of black and Latinx business owners indicated that one-fifth expected to close their business by the middle of 2021. Next slide, please. So when a small uh, locally owned business closes or is displaced, the city loses a lot more than just tax dollars. We lose the goods, services, and amenities that are geared toward the specific needs and, and tastes of local residents. Um, we lose the community landmarks and gathering spaces that foster relationship building, business-sponsored programs such as workforce training or scholarship opportunities, the character and cultural, cultural identity that make each neighborhood a unique and interesting place to be, and it also weakens the um, economic stability of the neighborhood with less local circulation of dollars and less local employment opportunities. Next slide, please. And this is my last slide, but I um, wanted to share this quote. It's from the director of the Small Business Anti-Displacement Network um, because I, I like the way that it frames these issues. Um, it says, unlike housing, small businesses are not widely viewed as critical to a community's life and livelihood in ways that justify public policy interventions. Housing is increasingly claimed as a human right, while large chain stores and corporations are subsidized in the name of economic development. Um, and cities that fail to invest in what works to protect and promote these businesses do so at their own peril. They threaten to lose the people and places that make neighborhoods economically vibrant, environmentally sustainable, and frankly, more interesting and enjoyable places to be. Um, so I'll hand it over to Lauren to get into some more of the program specifics. Thanks so much, Ashley. So we as staff recognize that there is an opportunity here to more intentionally utilize RDA tools and programming to address some of the challenges that Ashley just described. Um, by updating and proposing new commercial programming, we hope to accomplish eight overarching commercial objectives that include, and if we could go to the next slide, you can see them. Um, these, again, these objectives include um, providing opportunities to establish new services, amenities, um, or underrepresented businesses within a neighborhood incentivizing the construction of right-sized or typically smaller commercial spaces and new projects, activating existing underutilized commercial spaces, creating affordable rental or ownership opportunities for independent businesses and community serving nonprofits. And then next slide, please. Continuing on with those objectives, countering the displacement of existing businesses from their neighborhoods, implementing tenant preferences for minority and women-owned independent businesses as well as community-serving nonprofits, 
promoting the preservation, rehabilitation, or adaptive reuse of existing building stock to preserve a neighborhood's character, and finally, increasing the RDA's reach to non-traditional applicants to apply for and utilize RDA programs. So those are the eight ob overarching objectives. Next slide, please. So in order to achieve these commercial objectives, staff is proposing that the RDA's loan program as well as the Greenery District Adaptive Reuse Program be updated. Additionally, staff is proposing two new programs be created, including an affordable storefront activation program as well as a technical assistance program. And I will provide a high-level overview of each of these programs now. Next slide, please. So the first program to be updated is the RDA's loan program, also referred to as our revolving loan fund or the RLF. The goal of updating this program is to assist commercial development projects that align with the overarching commercial objectives. And so currently the RDA offers loans through our housing development loan program and also our revolving loan fund. In order to qualify for a loan from our revolving loan fund, a development must be located in an, in an RDA project area and meet a general objective within the corresponding um, project area plan. This could be that it's a sustainable project, has, a high, quali has high quality design, um, is close to transit, et cetera. Or um, in order to qualify now, it could be an affordable housing project um, that includes units at 80% AMI or, and below. Reviewing the current criteria, we'd like to be much more strategic with the RLF to focus on commercial projects, and we'd also like to introduce more specific threshold criteria in order to qualify. So qualifying projects may include those that are developed by an independent business or nonprofit for their own use with again a focus on minority and women owned businesses. Again, an example of this is the Bicycle Collective project that's a nonprofit that's developing their own building. Um, projects that dedicate commercial space to independent businesses or nonprofits. Here, this could be facilitated by a developer, but there must be space dedicated for those types of businesses. Um, affordable housing, mixed use projects that have an active ground floor commercial use. And here, uh, a leasing office or resident amen amenity space would not would not qualify. And finally, projects that incorporate preservation and reactivation of an existing historic structure. So those are um, the criteria that we are thinking about. And of course, this criteria may evolve as we do more research and engagement over the summer. Next slide, please. The next existing program um, proposed to be updated is the Granary Adaptive Reuse Program. The goal of this program is to facilitate the conversion of vacant or underutilized buildings to new, um, more productive uses and preserve neighbor neighborhood character. The current program offers forgivable loans for adaptive reuse projects, of course, in the Granary project area. Four projects have been successfully completed with RDA assistance, including Atmosphere Studios, Fisher Brewing, TF Brewing, and Orchid Dynasty that you all may be familiar with. Um, the proposed update contemplates expanding this program to all project areas and potentially expanding the definition of adaptive reuse um, to, his to include historic rehab projects. Um, to be more strategic, funding could also be limited to certain corridors and project areas that have a high concentration of historic buildings like State Street, Main Street, Ninth West, et cetera. And of course, funds would be remarketed in each of these project areas if the program is expanded. Next slide. The first new program to be proposed is the Affordable Storefront Activation Program. The goal of this program is to use public ownership or essentially control as a means to provide affordable rent and ownership opportunities to preferred tenant types, including independent and community serving nonprofits. 
through ownership, the RDA could put, an, put out an RFP, for example, to develop a mixed use building and maintain ownership of the commercial space to then lease affordably. Spaces could also be sold at an affordable price. Alternatively, alternatively, the RDA could master lease commercial space within an existing commercial building or new development and sublet um, at an affordable rate to these preferred tenant type, types. And this um, may be this program may be particularly beneficial for ground floor commercial spaces in existing buildings that have been vacant for some time and even new developments where we often hear that it's hard to um, rent out those new commercial spaces. Um, this program also works to preserve and create right sized or smaller commercial spaces that tend to be lacking in the city. Next slide please. Okay, so the second new program being proposed is a technical assistance program with the goal of increasing our reach to non-traditional applicants who may not have real estate development experience and more generally removing barriers to entry. This program may involve partnering with local businesses, business organizations rather, to provide capacity building services to entrepreneurs looking to start a business. These services may include small scale development planning, identification of available funding sources, or assistance with financial projections to uh, demonstrate a project's vi viability. Just some examples of things um, this program might, could include. Uh, next slide. So as Ashley described, our next steps include conducting additional research and community engagement. The engagement may include survey work, focus groups, and interviews. And as you all are very plugged into your communities, please reach out if you have suggestions regarding community and independent business connections. Um, we'd appreciate that. Um, and finally, we hope to bring our findings and more concrete program proposals back to you all for your consideration in the fall. So with that, um, please let us know if you have any questions or comments. All right, board members, do you guys have questions, comments? I do, but you have priority. <laughs> Go ahead, Victoria. Thank you for this. I like am in love with this program. I'm excited to see how it unfolds. And can we just like spend a couple days together, like going around my district and letting me introduce you to the amazing people who could benefit from this, please? We yes. would love we that. Would love it. It. I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is this is really amazing. Thank you. We'll go this way. Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you. And I, I appreciate. I appreciate the work here, and I appreciate the idea of the, uh, the technical and uh, educational assistance, because uh, I was listening to an NPR uh, cast this past week, and you know the number of uh, small businesses owned by people of color that succeed past that first year is, I think, under the single digit is in single digits, and uh, so many fail and probably not for lack of hard work, but just lack of that that one little tidbit of information that would really send them in the right direction. So I like the technical uh, for a new program, but how do we get that to the programs that are, or the businesses or the communities that are struggling there now so that they don't end up being in that endless loop of losing losing their business because of no fault of their own, and pushing that support there on that uh, educational and training side. Earlier, preventative advice, uh, or yeah, I guess both of them are preventative, but pushing that. So it's kind of like a comment and, a, and just a request to mm -hmm. really look at that, how we do that technical support. Yeah, that's a great comment. And we do hope to roll these all out kind of as a package. So hopefully the technical assistance will be in place to help with the other new programs. Um, but thanks for that comment. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the presentation and particularly, Ashley, I appreciate your sort of problem statement of like what we're trying to solve. It, it makes it clear why this is important. I guess my question is, related to a lot of other discussions we've been having as a council, which is, are we duplicating any of the things that economic development is already doing with the EDLF um, or with that technical assistance? Because I know that they have business support. I mean, that's the, 
point of their whole department or their whole division. So, um, no, it's a department. Uh, like, are we, is it appropriate for us to be creating another technical assistance program or can we be sort of collaborating with economic development and doing, um, using their resources that they already have, maybe augmenting them with RDA resources, but making sure that the people, whether they come in the door from economic development or into the, the city door through the, the RDA, making sure that they're able to access and easily sort of have that one-stop shop for all of their business development needs. Um, so I guess figuring out how these programs uh, uh, like complement but don't duplicate what we already have at, in other departments in the city would be important for me to understand a little bit better. I think what feels clearly in the RDA's purview and important is like developing spaces in the RDA project areas because we've identified project areas where we want your team to make sure that neighborhood vibrancy comes back and commercial vitality is a really big important piece to that. So I think of the four programs, um, the I'm just getting back to them, but the um, Adaptive Reuse Loan Program makes total sense as an RDA project. The Affordable Storefront Activation Program also makes total sense because those are kind of location-based. Mm -hmm. The RDA Loan, the Revolving Loan Fund, I, I guess I'm trying to understand how that's different than the EDLF. I think is it more related to the space that the business is trying to get? But I believe that economic development could also loan their money in order to get spaces, right? So trying to, I, I guess I maybe want, just want a little more understanding about how those things come together. And then the education and technical assistance, at first blush feels like it's more of a economic development, um, a business develop, whatever we mm -hmm. call that division thing. So I, those are my comments. I don't necessarily need answers right now, but I think as we develop these programs, those are some of the things that I'd, I'd like to know. But yeah. great problem statement, obviously something that we need and, and I'm really excited to see where this goes. Thanks. I did want to make a quick, just to respond to that really quickly. We ha we've met with um, business development a few times and we're going to, we plan to stay in contact with them. Um, and, and that's exactly what you said is our goal. We don't want to duplicate programs at all. And I think it would be great if um, someone looking for commercial assistance, whether it's a developer or a business owner, um, if we kind of had that one-stop shop where, you know, maybe certain things fit better within the, the EDLF program and what that funds and, and maybe we can assist with our new program. So we're still figuring that out, but that's definitely our intention. Right. Thank you. And maybe it's just defining which ones they do and which things we do. So yeah, yeah. totally. Thank you. Can I just share a quick, um, the board, um, with the assistance of the administration a couple years ago, worked on a, um, kind of a role clarity document as it related to housing activities between HAND and RDA. And I think that that was a really helpful exercise in kind of documenting so that everyone had like a shared understanding of, um, and it actually helped us communicate with um, developers in the community too to say, here, if you have a question like this, you go to HAND. And if you have a question like that, you go to RDA. And so um, maybe as we go forward, that's a tool we could replicate um, with this conversation. Thanks. Ale? And then Chris and then Amy, if you guys have comments. You wanna? Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I appreciate the administration uh, I mean the the RDA staff for, for working on this. Uh, it's a big deal. I feel very strongly about this uh, this the direction of this. Um, I do have uh, some maybe thoughts on the uh, rental, uh, yeah, the storefront activation, is that what it's called? Storefront activation program, affordable storefront activation program. Um, and you probably already thought about this, but um, keeping uh, small businesses struggle to make a profit very quick. Um, and they take years to, to get to that place to, to feel comfortable with, with their bottom line. Um, and giving some of these, these uh, small businesses time 
to uh, for longer leases so they can have a stable. Uh, they don't have to think about moving away quickly. Uh, is is something that is very helpful to establish themselves. Um, and uh, when we are talking about minority-owned businesses, and you know, it, it was touched here that we're going to be studying this and we're going to be talking to organizations and whatnot, but. As a city and as a as a, as a government, and I, I will dare to say, all governments uh, in 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 the country struggle with reaching out to communities of color, um, and I, I I hope that. Um, we don't reinvent the wheel, but at the same time, we understand that we're going to struggle. Um, that we're going to struggle reaching out to that, uh, that community, my community, uh, and it's going to require a lot of work. Um, and it will feel like it's not paying off, but it will. Um, we just need to be patient, and we need to reach out to trusted organizations in the community that already have that trust and that network and we need to partner up strongly with them uh, and I can think of many and I, I bet Victoria can think of many more but I am very excited about this but let's not reinvent the wheel it will be my advice um, thank you yeah and again we welcome any please reach out to us if you have any suggestions or comments um, we would love to hear them thank you Amy did you have a comment yeah, um, I just wanted to go back to Jen's point about when we kind of redid some things from hand and RDA and that role clarity. And off the top of my head, the first thing, the low hanging fruit is project area, right? That if a business comes and they're outside of the project area, then we can say, oh, wait a minute, you're go, go over to EDLF or vice versa, right? That if they're there and and it's like you fit right within this project area. So I just wanted to point that out that because this isn't housing, we have to spend it in project areas, right? And so just it kind of was on my in my brain of that low hanging fruit for how this differs to Darren's question, how this differs a little bit from the EDLF program. Um, and then I had some thoughts about what Alejandro said, but I'll come back to those probably offline. Oh, I want to know now. Now nope. I want to know. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, I, just, I have a few thoughts too. Um, let's start with Alice. I understand the length of the lease, you know, might be something that the RDA can help with. So if we could, must, you know, we can master lease a space for five, 10 years, 15 years, you, you're giving the assurance to the developer that you will get your money for the rent, we're kind of guaranteeing it, but we're also giving the 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 you know the 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 business that length right to recoup the investment to you know make a profit and and go on like that. We unfortunately in the past the RDA we've gotten uh, in trouble a little bit with certain nonprofits that we were trying to help temporarily in in buildings, and then when that lease was up, then they had to move um, and for us it was our clear understanding that it was temporary but for some nonprofits sometimes it wasn't as clear so I think with this program if we're going to embark on this I'm not sure what else to do that other than the contract that says hey this is for two three five ten years whatever it is but I think it's important that we are clear with the public that it might be temporary you know meaning ten years temporary or five years but it is it has a time limit uh, depending on what we are able to negotiate with, you know, with, with a property owner. Um, other things that I'm thinking about this program, I think, um, thank you so much for, for that presentation, like Darren said, about what are we trying to solve. Um, there's a book called The Suburbanization of New York or Suburbanization of Manhattan or something that talks about how all the small businesses mostly have been displaced and taken over by the big companies that can offer a better lease rate, can offer a longer term, et cetera. And New York, in Manhattan, certain areas has lost that, you know, that, um, that quaint, that exciting, um, you know, spaces or, or neighborhoods where you can go and find things that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Um, and so that's something that I think Salt Lake City has going for us when we, if we compare ourselves to um, the suburbs. It's like we still have that, that spirit here of small businesses, but we're losing them. So I think this is very timely. Obviously, we wish we would have done this before, but 
it's timely at the same time and that's something that we need, I feel strongly that we need to focus on because uh, I go back to the budget and how we need, you know, people back downtown um, supporting businesses and spending that money right here versus elsewhere so that we can help our, our, our budget and we can offer the services that we do. Um, so it makes so make sense financially as well for us. So that's one of the reasons I feel strongly that we need to focus on this. Um, the tech assistant assistance part, and maybe this is something that you can clarify now or later, but to Darren's point, to me, when we say a technical assistance to, at the RDA, to me, it's more about navigating the RDA process, not necessarily teaching a business how to run a business or be financial, you know, financially sustainable or work towards that. Yeah. But maybe Darren understood that the, tec the technical assistance is actually helping them I mean, I don't know. What's the difference? Yeah, what we had in mind was exactly what you described, just helping um, helping applicants, yeah, get through the, navigate the RDA process and translate, or, you know, not literally translate, but understand our programs and how they work, because we recognize that it can be, you know, not everyone get just gets that. Um, but I think, you know, through our community engagement efforts, we're hoping to build relationships with groups who already do this work. And I think it could be a great opportunity to partner with them um, and, potentially, um, you know, compensate them to help our applicants um, with technical assistance. Because we do know there's a lot of groups out there who have been doing this work and they do a great job at it. So um, we're hoping to build better connections with them. Thanks. Um, and then my last comment on this, we, you know, you guys, we all have the resources out there. So I, I, would, I would hope that we are very intentional about this pro program, not about, well, we have it, somebody can go to the link and, and apply for something if they need to, more like we're actively recruiting. When I say actively recruiting, is going to a farmer's market in the west side or downtown, getting to know those businesses and offering the program, hey, are you looking for space? Or are you struggling, you know, if you have space already, are you struggling? Because here are some programs where we can recruit you know, back downtown, back in our project areas. A lot of those businesses out there in farmers markets either are, um, are not in Salt Lake City or are renting incuba you know, incubator kitchens out there. So they definitely need, you know, they need that extra help where the city is actually recruiting and asking and offering and saying, this is where we can place you if you needed space to get you going, yeah. you know. So um, that's my hope and, and um, and not just hoping that somebody will show up at our door and say, hey, can you help me, you know? Yeah, so. absolutely. So those are my comments. Uh, I'm done. Anybody else? <laughs> those were a lot of comments. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I think we're done with that number, uh, with that, sorry, with that item, C2. Thank you so much. That was great. a great presentation and a great program. Um, we we need we need to go into a closed session, so I will need a motion to move into a closed session for strategy sessions to discuss the purchase, exchange, or lease of real real property and attorney client matters. The motion. Madam Chair, I move that we go into a closed session for the purpose of receiving advice of counsel and discussing acquisition of property. Second. Yep. So we have a motion by Board Member Wharton, seconded by Board Member Fowler. So, Fowler? Yes. Wharton? Yes. Pui? Yes. Mano? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Uh, Petro? Yes. And I'm a yes. So, Jen. And Madam Chair, just before, um, since that passed, just wanted to clarify for um, anyone from the administration joining remotely, we do have a separate link to join this closed session. And for members of the public who are joining um, our WebEx, uh, we will return to this WebEx um, to go to the next item, item number three. Um, so uh, members of the public or people who aren't involved in the session, you can stay in the WebEx that you're in right now and we will transition over to another one. Thank you. Convene again as the RDA board. Um, for those that are watching, we have, uh, we, we are at item C3, I believe, or maybe it's not C3, let me see.
Yeah, it is C3. Um, we need to strop all. So the, um, to release some funds from the North Temple Strategic Intervention Fund. So I need a motion for this. Madam, Madam Chair. Yeah. I move that we release funds from the North Temple Strategic Intervention Fund in the amount of 1.1. 1. 1, is there more than the 1.1? 1. 1.11 1. 1, 1. 1. 1. 1 million dollars. Yo. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. So do we have any discussion about this? No? Okay, so we just... Actually, if we need a straw poll, we didn't need a, a motion. I'm so sorry. But anyway, so um, Board Member Fowler did mention what we're straw polling for, um, and we just need people to show their feelings right now about releasing $1.11 million out of the North Temple Strategic Intervention Fund. All right, so we have We're destroying six that poll. <laughs> people um, in, uh, in agreement, and we have one absent. Dan Dugan is absent for that straw poll. So thank you, um, Cara, and, and Dan, you know, he left for all that presentation earlier. Um, we are moving on to item number four, report and announcements from the executive director. Okay, we don't have any comments from our exec executive director, but... Thank you for being here, Mayor. Um, we're moving on to number uh, to item number five, report and announcements from RDA staff. So Kara is here sitting with us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. We do have one announcement. Um, on June 2nd, RDA staff released a $3 million notice of funding availability, or NOFA, through the RDA's Housing Development Loan Fund for affordable housing developments um, experiencing an emergency financial gap. Construction costs have increased significantly, and many developments are facing cost overruns. Um, to apply for these funds, at least 20% of the project's total units must be rent restricted to households earning 60% AMI or below, and the project must be ready to close within 90 days of being awarded RDA financing. These funds will remain open until expended. All right. And that's our only announcement. All right, thank you. Well, what's the dollar amount? $3 million. Does this mean, Kara, does this mean that the three million, are we, that we won't have non-emergency funds or that we still have leftover money for the non-emergency ones? We will still have the regular annual um, okay. notice of funding availability for housing development loan funds. Okay, thanks. Uh, board members, any comments on that? No, questions? Go ahead, Kara. Do you have more for um, us? That's our only announcement. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, we're moving on to item D, which is uh, written briefings, and we have none. We don't have a, a consent agenda at item E. And then I think we are... I don't think there's anything else, so I think we're adjourned. Do I need a motion for... To adjourn. Okay, well, the RDA meeting has concluded. So thank you so much for watching and for being here and the work that you guys do. All right.